All right. I would call to order the Anna Boone School District uh, voting meeting. Um, we're going to stand for the pledge now. To the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have a roll call, Mr. Potts? Okay. Mrs. Bite. Mrs. Bite. Mr. Miller. Here. Mr. Martino? Here. Mr. Ogis O'Neill? Mr. Ogis O'Neill? Mr. Potts? Here. Mr. Rathman? Here. Mr. Scott? Here. Ms. Bergowski? Here. And Mr. Wolf? Mr. Wolf? All right, um, procedure for public participation. If you haven't done so already, we'd ask that you sign in in the back. And if there's anything you want to address the board about, simply come to the podium, uh, put your name and address, uh, state your name and address, and sign in on the sheet there. And uh, you'll have three minutes to, uh, to share what you want to share. Uh, any agenda edits? I have two, Mr. Scott. One, I'd like to remove item 7F, administrative salary adjustments. I'd like to remove that from the consent agenda and vote them separately. And the other is under new business. The statement last time I gave a chance to speak without a three minute time limit, I'm going to make some important comments. <laughs> from the consent agenda altogether and just calling it out separately? Is that all we're yes, doing? Please. Okay. Uh, Mr. Scott, um, on the consent items as well, J, K, and L, I don't feel that I can vote on those since I was not here. So if we can pull them out. Okay. Separately. All right. Any other edits? All right. Any presentations by public on agenda items? Seeing none, we have a motion for consent items as amended. We make that motion for uh, consent items 7 a to 7 n as amended. Second. Motion by Mr. Rodarski, second by Mr. Martinez. All right, so it's uh, 7 A, B, C, D, E, G, H, I, M, and N. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes to eight, seven, seven, six, 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 zero. All right. We we'll have a motion for seven F. Take a motion for seven F. Second. Motion by Mr. Darsky, second by Mr. Uh, Rathkett. <laughs> Any board discussion? I, I just, I would have just voted separately. Mr. Harris is aware of my objections to, to the salary adjustments in that the way they were developed, but I think some are too high and some are too low, so I just want to have that separate. Okay. Any other comments? All right, roll call vote, please. Okay. For 7F, Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Martino? No. Mr. Potts? Yes. Mr. Rathka? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Ferdowski? Yes. 
the motion carries. 5-1. All right, do we have a motion for item 7, J, K, and L? So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Rathgeb, second by Ms. Tararski. Can we have a roll call vote, please, Mr. Potts? Mr. Martino? Yes. Mr. Potts? Yes. Mr. Rathgeb? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Tardowski? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Scott? We have skipped right over the All right, we'll, we'll, we'll do it now. Then. Sorry about that. Well, it's kind of distracting to have this light in my face, so. You sure? All right. All right. Um, uh, item number eight pers uh, personnel consent items. We have a motion. Make a motion for items uh, A through C. Motion by Mr. Rathgeb, second by Ms. Swardarski. Mr. Fox, yes. Mr. Rathgeb? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Swardarski? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Martino? Yes. All right, item number nine, finance. We have a motion to approve items A and B. So uh, well, I can make a motion for A, because I think there might want to be business. I'm going to take them separate, because there might be a discussion on A. Yeah. All right. I'll, as far uh, as the logo. You okay with amending? Re retract my uh, motion to uh, make a motion to approve 9A. Oh, I didn't hear you say anything. I'll All right. So, <laughs> do we have uh, discussion on item 9A? Yeah, just just what Mr. Mr. Bansky had mentioned last week. Um, my understanding is about 600 and some dollars for the logo on the curtain. We really need a logo on the side curtain that just blocks say. The, the bleachers. I was no. no. I don't think so. Not at all. So that's why it's not to exceed. So, so no, right, no if logo. we don't want the logo, we just need to, to make that up. So, no I, logo. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Do a roll call vote. So then this is a vote to approve the curtain without uh, the screen without logo. Yeah. Do you want me to, should we amend the, it's, it mean that the, it was supposed to be covered with the not to exceed 6,500, if I'm not mistaken. It makes sense to clarify if you want to amend, amend your, your I'll, I'll say, I'll say. Mr. Rathcap, do you want to amend your motion yet again? Please. All right. So we're going to add the uh, without district logo. Ms. Trudarski? Do we have a motion for set or for 9B, rather? We've got to vote again. Sorry. We're going to re-vote on 7A as amended by Mr. Rathgett. Let's try this again. So, okay, Mr. Potts, yes. Mr. Rathgett? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Trudarski? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Martino? Yes. Carries 6 -0. Are we sure? We're sure. <laughs> All right. We have a motion for 9B. So moved. Second. First by Mr. Rathgeb, second by Mr. Rodarski. Uh, I, I, I did have a question on the invoice. It says something about uh, picking it up in a certain truck or something. Correctly, so that bad. Uh, uh, should go. I should go to it. Hang on. 
I, I know your question because I have the same question. It says if a lift gauge required the cost will increase by 2400 hours. We don't know yet whether we're going to have to spend this $2,400 or not. Can okay, we, do we have a four point? Like, are, are, we, are we picking it up? Uh, what can we pick it Somebody up? Somebody says it's a cat. It's us the address set. Picking it up. And that's why the amount is 54.2 because it's a Yeah, but, but it's, it's asterisk here that if it's required, the cost will increase by 2400 That should just be eliminated then if it's not going to take place. So then we're just voting on the $5,400. Correct. So is that if they deliver with you know, a lift gate truck, is that what we're going to get? We have the truck to pick it up. We're fine. Okay. My understanding as per Casey is this is the dollar amount we're approving because it's not going to require the additional amount. Okay. And I, I assume it's local because I, I said this is, like, this is a Canadian address. It's a local, yes, local distributor local. for this? Okay. Yes, it is. Mr. Rodarski, second by Mr. Martino. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Rodarski? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mr. Martino? Yes. Mr. Potts? Yes. Mr. Rathke? Yes. The motion carries 6 0. And number uh, item 11, old business. We have a motion for uh, Article A. Motion by Mr. Rathgeb, second by Ms. Wodarski. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 6 0. All right. And um, we'll now have a presentation on uh, full day kindergarten. Last year we had 69 on level, and now we have 74. 
Last year we had 29 below level and 44 this year. 13 below level in 16, 17, and 21 this year. And that's just the copy of what you have in front of you. That's the assessment that we do give. And you can see that on that assessment, um, things are tested such as their academic, their cognitive development, their language development, physical development, early literacy and math skills. Go to the next slide. This slide will look familiar. What was the goal of full day kindergarten? It's to fill in the learning gaps by using extra time and support, which will allow the students to catch up to their peers. This was the schedule um, that was put together to uh, show the difference between what a half day kindergarten and a full day kindergarten would look like. And then we uh, determined important measures and data collection that we wanted to have for the students going through the program. Um, and we will, we have, we have highlighted that data in the next few slides. So if you just look through, we do the dibbles three times a year. Um, dibbles progress monitoring monthly. The kindergarten screenings based on the PA Common Core four times a year. The F and P assessments down to some canal. The social and emotional checklist, which I also want to pass out, um, just so that you get to see that um, that indicator as well. Thank you. Uh, the Go Math end of the year keynotes and math test, and the standards based report card three times a year. Um, as we show the data, if you kind of think about the standards here below, um, think about a three as meeting the standard, a two as progressing towards the standard, and one as not meeting the standard at this time. And now I'll turn it on over to the teachers to talk about the data. Hi. So what we did was we took that data, and the blue is where we were at the beginning in September, and then the reddish color was where we were at the end of the year for the letters and the letter sounds here on this screen. So we did the same screening again four times a year, where we just put the beginning and the end of the year. A three is where we'd like to see them, that means they've met the standard. Two is going towards that, and one is not there yet. So you can see the information there at the bottom. And then also there are the letter sounds. So the wonderful thing is we see lots of blue there <laughs> at the end of the year. Um, or I mean, lots of, lots of red there for the threes at the end of the year. So if you look at the percentages, our children in September were mostly a one, 76% for letters. and. At the end of the school year, 87% of our kids had met that standard for letters. As far as the letter sounds, if you look, there were no children who had met the standard in September for letter sounds. At the end, 87% of the children had met our standard for um, letter sounds, which is fantastic. These and to be just in our kindergarten role, the two means we're missing a few sounds. It might be tricky sounds like the Y or the, the difference between the B and the D. To be a three, you really need to secure and know all of them. So a two means they're close, there's a few missing. It's still wonderful percentages. So. Next we have recognizing rhymes. So we would give them two words. Cat, bat, do they rhyme? Boat, dog, do they rhyme? Um, at the beginning of the year, 23% could do that skill. At the end, 90% of our students could do that skill. And then their concepts of print is knowing how to read a book. Where's the beginning, the end? Reading left to right, top to bottom, front to back. Knowing the difference between a letter, a word, and a sentence. Uh, knowing about punctuation, periods, and exclamation points, and question marks. And all of those skills you need in order to read a book. Um, that's what concepts of print is. So at the beginning of the year, Again, we had 16% that understood how to use a book and, and, and use that book, and the end of the year, 100% of our students in our class So now we're, we're looking at the dibbles. Um, this is a time test. It's one minute long. And the children, for first sound fluency, they're asked to give the first sound of a word. So if I say moon, they say mmm. If I say sun, they say s. So at the beginning of the year, core, strategic, and intensive are the, the three categories. We want the children to be core. Um, that's meeting the standard. So strategic is moving towards the standard. Intensive is um, the not meeting the standard at this time. 
So in the beginning of the school year in September, 27% of our children were poor for this. Now, that is a lower number than what we have at the end of the school year. The score actually gets, it's harder for them to meet that standard. The score goes up. So 27% of kids met it in September, and it got even harder, but yet we still had 87% of our children um, meeting that standard at the end of the school year. And I just double-checked on that. And in September, September, they need to be able to do nine sounds in a minute. At the end of the year, they have to do 42 sounds in a minute. And there we have 87% of kids doing that. <laughs> uh, letter naming fluency is where they have rows of letters mixed up uppercase, lowercase, they need to be able to name as many as they can in one minute. Um, again, 27% of children were able to um, meet the score in the beginning of the school year. Um, the score does get harder, and 84% of children were able to um, meet that number, which I believe is 62 if we're using the... Yeah, so six, they had to, to name 62 letters to be poor. The Fonts is our, the test that we use to test what is their reading level. So being able to read the book without teacher support, that they just get the book and able to read it without ever seeing it before, and then also being able to answer comprehension questions about it, um, remembering what was in the book, making personal connections to it. Um, you have to be able to do it in order to have that as your reading level. So not just reading the words, but understanding it as well. Uh, at, at the beginning of the year, our goal is for them in kindergarten to be an A, and then we progress up in the end of the year, we'd like them to be a level D or E. Um, at the beginning of the year, we look for books that say, like, I like dogs, I like cats. At the end of the year, it has a much more complex sentence, usually two sentences on a page back of the book. It's like a D, E. Okay, so it, it changes drastically what it is. And again, three is where is means that they're on level. So in September, to be on level, they had to be able to read an A book, like I like dogs, I like cats, type of a book, in order the 58% in May that were where we'd like them to be on reading level um, was a much more complex book. Really, in order, and just to, to that, Fonda Spinell really says, they know all those skills can apply them. They know the letters, or sounds, they know the sight words, they can sound out words, and put all of those skills together into a book. Um, so our math skills are screened by our math interventionist, um, as well as the special <coughs> teachers. And uh, the math interventionist actually use a time test also uh, to have kids qualify for Title I. So she does a one-minute time test for counting to 100 and for numbers 0 to 10. So in September, only 6% of our children could count to 100. And at the end of the school year, 94% um, of our children met that goal and met that standard and um, were able to count to 100, which is, is huge. Um, it was a great accomplishment. And the number ID, uh, identifying numbers from 0 to 10, again, it's just like the letters. They're, are, they're all out of order. It's all of the numbers from 0 to 10, and there's rows of them. The children have one minute to be able to identify those uh, numbers as many as they can. And in the beginning of the year, again, it's a lower score, so 37% of our kids were poor. At the end of the year, um, they're expected to be able to name many more, um, which I think it might be around the same as the letters, which is around 60, and 74% of our children could do that. So, um, again, another great accomplishment for the kids. In one of the handouts we just gave to you, uh, the second one that you got, this, that, this is where this information comes from. The beginning of the year, in September it's filled out, and then it's filled out again in May on each student. And that's where all of these percentages come from. So beginning play skills is, is one of the first sections that you see on there. And in September, and there, there's about 10 different things, um, it's not just one question, but two, about 2% 2 were at the end of the year, almost 80% had that, the social skills at the beginning of play. Flexibility, the section where you can read the questions that are on there, the, the pieces that are on there, 16%, almost always the end of the year, 77%. They made huge, huge accomplishments in our social skills. We do have social skills program that we do a second step, as well as many other lessons. We build in a social skills lesson every day on how
how to be a student, how to be a friend, um, how, about um, responsibility, um, self-care, things like that. So as you can see, intermediate play went from 13% to 77%. Um, our problem solving went from 6% to 67%, which is, is a wonderful skill for the children to have. You know, how do I handle this situation? Um, and what can I do to change it for next time? So uh, they, have, they made great gains in, in a lot of these areas. Even the advanced play, you know, a lot of children in kindergarten have <clears throat> trouble with, you know, being able to um, lead in, in different play situations. A lot of our children um, at the end of the school year were very successful with advanced play. Conversational skills, knowing how to address someone, um, how to use their words to solve a problem or to talk to a person instead of just getting upset. Um, so they went from 17% to 77% and 17% to 73%. So you can see there are huge gains in, in all 30 of our children that we had last year. Emotions, being able to control our strong emotions. We talk about big emotions and how we can take care of those and calm, self-calm ourselves. 13% um, at the beginning of the year to about 83% at the end of the year and non-verbal conversation skills, understanding how somebody else is feeling. Um, you know, we talk about using the expressions on people's faces. That went from 20% to 70% um, that they were able to do that. Self-regulation is, is a pretty big one in kindergarten, um, being able to control uh, one's emotions. Uh, is, is a big one also. So they went from 17% to 73%. And compliments. It seems so simple, but yet it's something that we must learn. So um, hearing the children give out compliments for the purpose of, of making someone else feel better or making someone else feel good to make themselves feel good, you know, being a selfless thing is, is a beautiful thing to see in our classroom. So they went from 20% to 80% and they just love giving them out all the time. And they're still giving them out in first grade, so I get to see the opportunity of them using those skills in first grade as well, uh, which is really nice. And so I also want to point out, we do the second step curriculum, which is our social skills curriculum, but these teachers are teaching it in the moment all the time, modeling the behavior, giving sharing words that the children need to use um, as they're communicating. So that constant immersion in that for a full day, um, I think really makes a difference. Um, so what is the timeline for full day kindergarten? The three-year pilot to gather data over the course of three years in order to show the benefits of continuing the program. Last year was our starting year, 16-17, and then uh, this year with the 17-18 current school year. And the next slide is just some of the research that we found in doing uh, the last presentation. So that's still up there, um, just showing how much growth children can make in a full day kindergarten experience. And I think it really happened. I mean, those scores are, are pretty significant for the children who came in knowing, you know, very little letters, sounds. I mean, really those percentages that you saw were fantastic. Um. Well, at what point will we have some follow-up on the kids that were in the program last year and how they're doing in first grade relative to their peers? I can do a presentation like that so you can see where they are, where they are now. Um, and I think it will be important to continue to get that down the line. What are, how are they doing in first grade? How are they doing in second grade? So I can come back and do another presentation for that information. Yeah, and then, and then did the, are the assessments done all, through all the kindergarten classes? Yes. So, how do they? How do those percentages at the beginning of the year compare, and at the end of the year compare with the, the half day kids? Mm -hmm. So the de the same data you saw with the half day. Yeah, like I'm curious is you know maybe the mix isn't as um, like maybe there's maybe maybe in the in the half day class there's fewer kids in the in the lower percentages, um, mm -hmm. but you know are the are the the improvements as drastic as what we see in the full day. You know, meaning 
at the end, they're very similar, and therefore, they're all you know, equally prepared for first grade. And then it'd be interesting to see that, and then relative to how they're doing in first grade against their peers. So our math interventionist does a screening at the beginning of the year, and as of that first month at least, in September, none of our children were being seen for math intervention support for Title I. So, of all 30 kids. So, I thought that was no, a good. pretty pretty nice, you know, little tidbit that she shared with us. So I was really excited about that. We have to remember the part of the purpose of this was to have these 30 kids catch up to the rest of the kindergartners. Yeah, that's right. And then when I got to first grade, they were on the level playing field. And we, we, we can get you data, but more than one person has said that our kids are holding their own in first grade, so I'm hoping that oh, it I'm, continues. I'm not questioning it. I just oh, I would no, like I, to, the, to me, the proof is in not just what they did in kindergarten, but then how they're doing in Absolutely. first grade. Yeah. I think it would be very helpful to see the comparison to the, the half-day students as well. Mm -hmm. And do we keep the same metrics for first grade as well? Or, I mean, it seems like we were uh, helpful. So, we use the doubles, we use parts monitoring, but it's different tests than they'll be taking in first grade. But we're, second we're grade. capturing the same type of information that, that could help us. Reading skills, yes. Okay. And math skills. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Before, before they finish, I just want everybody to know, and I want for the record, how much credit Mrs. Murmitroy and Mrs. Iron deserve for this whole program. For those of you that weren't on the board, the previous superintendent had mentioned that there's kindergarten multiple times, but we never really did anything with it. And I met Mrs. Murmitroy and Mrs. Latimer through my granddaughter being in kindergarten. And the summer after my granddaughter finished kindergarten, I met with the two of them at Michael's Diner and said, you explained to me what at risk kindergarten is, and they did. And I said, would the two of you be willing to put something together to present to the board? We being the board president at the time. So they did, and later that summer, they met again at Michael's Diner with Mrs. Hefter and Mr. Hurley, who was the acting superintendent at the time. So they put all this together, sold it to Mrs. Hefter and Mr. Hurley, then sold it to the board, and have worked with it since day one. So this is their baby, and uh, I'm sure they're very proud of it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much for sharing what you do, and the uh, little observation which I was a little surprised at. Actually, maybe thinking about it, maybe it's just seen that like, like some of the kids, I was actually wasn't expecting one is ready to be as proficient in the beginning, but maybe they're only proficient in one thing and the other areas they're, they're, they're lacking. Yes. That some of them are actually starting out and some areas are okay. Yeah. Some of the scores are a little bit lower, yeah. too, in the beginning of the year. So I think they did each have some strengths here and there. And, and they were all there for, I mean, they all had some academic need. Yeah. But they're there for different reasons. You know, there's some behavioral things, some right. social things, right. some, yeah. you know, some of their bodies, their body functionings. You know, like they all kind of have their own reason, mm -hmm. you know, and they all did come up with strength. Yeah. Yeah. And they took off. It was amazing. It was awesome. And I'm just going to pop a silly question. I assume the, the, the ones that don't quite get to be proficient, um, you know, you're sharing that with the first grade, where you're going in the first grade from some teachers, you know, maybe where. I was just going to say that another reason to see what the other uh, full, the half day kids are is, you know, are we identifying the at risk kids accurately? Meaning, if, if do we have too many that are higher up on the chart that didn't need to be there and we missed some that were in half day that should have been in the full day? Right now, there are two that are moving into the program, two moved out, so now two of them in. And so what we do is we'll look at our data. We don't look back at the brigands now because weeks have gone by, so we want to see what are they actually doing yeah. in the classroom, how are they performing with reading, with math, um, and see which children need that intervention. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at. You know what else I just thought of, and it wasn't part of their presentation, but if you think about it in terms of Mr. Harris' one boom concept, 
now all the first graders are all in the same building. So when they finish the full day kindergarten, they're still in the same building, not spread out in the three different homes. So, um, so we, we had, we did have enough spots for all the kids initially to move down. So, so did all the kids who were eligible or were we, we thought would benefit know that they were at the point where they couldn't use full day or we didn't have enough spots? Or did, did so I think my question is, yeah. the two moved down to go, so how do you approach the parents now that, hey, we have an opening now because I called them, them. I called them and I just explained. And they were not, um, one of them I don't even think did this reading in May. Um, so we're just looking straight at the data um, for the whole grade level and you know, determining you know, which students are getting interventions and not making the progress we'd like them to make um, and trying this intervention. Yeah, and it's offering, it, it's, it's also yeah. up to the parents if they want to take yes. it or not, and if not, then we want to the next, the next one. If we don't have, um, we don't have room for all the children who are identified to work down from like, the lowest scores now, is that not? Right, like we look at the lowest scores and then we just work down the line and then we draw the line and say, um, in fact, we had some sets of twins where one was in, one was out. So we would call the parent and explain that, you know, one child qualified, one child didn't. Um, with both of those cases, they prefer to keep them out. Um, so we'll just continue monitoring the progress in the half day program and just making sure that they're uh, making that the progress that they want them to make. So that's how we do it. Say 30 is the cutoff. So we started with 15 and 15, and then two moved out and two more moved in. Thank you very much. Again for the presentation. All right, uh, we're at item 12, a new business. Mr. Martino. people in the beginning to sign in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the members in the public that are here, if you haven't signed in, in the back, we ask you please do so before you leave. Thank you. Yep.
I went over to the family and people, and I wrote this before. I was sure they were going to be here, but Mrs. Murgatroyd and Mrs. Latimer, Kevin Yohan are the teachers who educated me on the benefits of Everest Kindergarten, that convinced the administration to establish it and have made it a resounding success. Connor Kurtz, Connor taught me the running for the school board and helped me get elected. I watched Connor grow from a high school senior to a college graduate, now with a career in Washington, D.C., while serving the educational needs of our students and holding the line with school property taxes. Carol Bites, Carol ran at the same time I did, although in a different voting district. And while Carol and I didn't agree on everything in that four-year period, I respect that she never lost sight of her constituents and fought hard for the taxpayers of this community. She was also subject to some condescension and unsavory verbal abuse from other board members, none of which should have been permitted, but she always kept her head up. Rob Hurley, Rob filled in admirably as the acting superintendent when the then superintendent unexpectedly bailed out on us with little notice. And Rob now serves as the able deputy of Jim Harris. Jim Harris, I've watched him grow into the position of superintendent and will not yet be complete the finished product. He's already the best superintendent the school district has had since I moved here in 2003. I believe the future is bright with Jim at the helm. Lauren Small. After Lauren's interview, I was asked by Connor what I thought. And my response was that Lauren would be capable, but not a superstar. I couldn't have been more wrong. Lauren discovered so many financial discrepancies, it's a wonder we ever passed the prior financial audit. He not only corrected those discrepancies, but put systems in place to prevent a recurrence. He saved this district untold amounts of money and is truly a chief financial officer superstar. Larry Speed. Larry assisted me in my campaign to be elected to the board and later was appointed to fill a board vacancy. Larry's irreverent dry humor kept the executive sessions interesting, but more important than that, Larry was an ardent advocate for the taxpayers of this community. And lastly, Andrew Basil. I consider it an honor and a privilege to have served on the board of Andrew. He was a mentor to me, even before my election, and to many of the other board members as well. Upon his election to the board 10 years ago, he had to deal with many backroom deals, unnecessary spending, unsustainable contracts, and exorbitant school property tax increases. He changed most of that and eliminated much of the wasteful spending it was a scourge to the local taxpayers. Earlier this year, I nominated Andrew for the Wall of Honor. That's a travesty he wasn't selected after devoting eight years of his life to this district. The property taxpayers of this community are already seeing the effects of Andrew and Larry not being reelected to the board. And over the next several years, we'll rue that decision even more. One final thought to the returning and incoming board members. It will be unfair to the property taxpayers of this community for you to again spend money you don't have and sign contracts you can't afford, then turn around and again raise already too high school property taxes with the excuse you're worried about future deficits. You don't improve education by throwing money at it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martino. Any presentations by the public on any of the issues? Yeah, just going to add a couple things, right? Oh, sorry. I uh, wanted to uh, first uh, thank Mr. Gressrow and the uh, Hammond County Blinds Club uh, that sponsored the uh, East Poster Contest again this year. Uh, and uh, middle school has been very uh, proficient at providing us artists. Uh, unfortunately, the winning one is not here that went to our uh, district. Uh, I haven't heard who, who won yet, so we'll see. L last year we, we came in second. The uh, Spring Township Lions won, and that, actually that lady uh, uh, came in. Uh, she was on, on one of the honorable mentions uh, worldwide. So she actually was we're a very good poster, and she actually got some money out of that. So uh, again, thanks to the middle school for allowing the Lions to do that, and uh, hopefully the kids have some fun doing that. Uh, 
Uh, I also had a, a question, just one item I know. Mr. Uh, not here, your board is um, Mr. Schmidt. Um, but the one item for that was brought to our attention here, and I was curious. Um, the AC is using our, uh, allowed them to use the uh, turf field for soccer, um, which you know, has, the, the AC has, has a ton of fields. They don't look at it, they need to use it. But I know I keep seeing week after week that our turf field is going to be is in desperate need of replacement soon. So I'm wondering why we're allowing more usage of it. Uh, you know, we're trying to you know, get that thing to last a little bit longer. So uh, we've already we've already agreed to it most like so just bring it maybe Mr. Schmidt's attention as to why uh really not extra stuff and uh, keep reading about is how bad shape the fields in. Thank you. Lori Ho, wonder if Penn's Lane Lane Double Spill. I didn't plan on speaking. I just came to listen tonight. Um, I didn't realize they were going to be talking about kindergarten, so I felt the need to come up and speak. Um, my daughter is graduating this year, and she had Christmas Purgatory in the very first all day kindergarten class. So I've had the experience of living in our district for 27 years. I've worked in a kindergarten enrichment program for the last 11 years in our district for those students who weren't able to get into the full day kindergarten. They would come for an enrichment program at the end of the day as their half day. So I've got two other students who, uh, children of mine, who were in half day kindergarten before all day. And I've been able to see the difference that goes from a student who started as an all day kindergartner and one that were half day. So I am employing for our board to really consider moving forward in the future that we get back to all day kindergarten for all of our students. There is a huge difference um, between the half day and the all day, and I hope that when Mrs. Hafner provides those statistics for you and what is going on between the half day and the full day and those that have graduated up to first grade. Um, one of the biggest things I think that I have noticed is that social skills that they're really not getting in a half day. Um, the learning to self-confidence, their improved driving skills, their critical thinking skills, and how to deal with different things. A lot of things that I hear from parents today in first and second graders is they have a really hard time uh, going and transitioning in a full day and they're complaining about, they get frustrated quickly, they don't want to do their homework, they feel overwhelmed. And I think it's because they didn't learn some of those skills at an earlier age. And it's just about time, having that time in kindergarten all day to develop those skills is the foundation that the children need to get them through first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and all the way up to graduating here at the end of the year. So in the process of trying to improve our district, really consider that we need to start at the bottom again and bring back all day kindergarten. Thank you. Thank you. Martino, thank you for your service. 
and know that at least from the taxpayers' point of view, your voice of reason will be sort of missed. Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing none, we have a motion to adjourn. Oh, 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 oh sorry. <clears throat> well, as we always do, I like to embarrass three school directors. Mr. Potts. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to thank you for your service. It's been great. Thank you for watching. Great. Thank you. Mr. Rodowski. On down. No, no, I dropped Richard earlier. Thank you. Thank you. And to the man who was board president who hired me, who called me every night just to chat. Is this funny? No. You know, thank you. And like, like, like the woman, like she said, he puts in more hours, more work, anyone I know. Whenever there's a meeting, an invitation that goes out, or an after school event, he is there. And the full day kindergarten, I know he was championing it, and others thought he was cutting programs. He was really trying to support it. And we joke all the time, we like to be hated. He does. And I said, you have to be good at it. And he's good at it. But he has great ideas, and he doesn't let the public know. He has a huge heart, and I'm really, really going to miss him. So once again, I'm here. I know you'll be here, but I can just lock you out. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's all. All right, you have a motion to adjourn. Second. Meeting adjourned.